good morning or afternoon or night or whatever time you're watching this. Um, I'm just going to go through your chapter 3 review. I'm going to do one of every type of question. So, for example, if we're looking at numbers 1 and 2, I'm just going to do number 1. Um, and once you know how to do one of these, you can learn how to do any of them. Um, so the first part says to determine the constant rate of change between X and Y in each table. And if you remember, to find the constant rate of change, all we do is we uh, find the change in Y and we divide it by the change in X. And remember this triangle just means change in. It's a long word to write out. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Y's because they're on top. So how do I get from negative 4 to negative 1? That's what I always ask myself. And to get from negative 4 to negative 1, I added 3. How did I get from negative 1 to 2? I added 3. How did I get from 2 to 5? I added 3. And on the top, how did I get from 2 to 7? I added 5. How did I get from 7 to 12? Again, I added 5. And lastly, how did I get from 12 to 17? I added 5. So we're going to make um, a fraction with the change in y over the change in x. Since these are all the same and these are all the same, I know that that fraction is going to be the same. So no need to write 3 over 5, 3 over 5, and 3 over 5. We'll just write it one time. So the change in y was 3 and the change in x was 5. So my CRC is 3 over 5. On number two, I'm not going to work it out with you, but I do want you to be um, aware on the Y's, we're going from 18 to 10. So we're not going to be adding this time, but we're going to be subtracting some number. So be very careful on number two. Numbers three and four are very similar, so I'm just going to work number three. Um, the equation that we always use when we're given a set of ordered pairs to find the slope is this m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember that these twos and ones don't mean squared. We're just labeling which um, points we're using. And so remember m stood for the slope. So that's what we're solving for here. I always like to label my ordered pairs, um, x1, y1, x2, y2. So remember, x always comes first, y comes second, x always comes first, y comes second. So that has to be, this has to be an x and that has to be a y. Same here, x, y. But our ones and twos are a little more flexible. Um, I always like to make the first ordered pair ones and the second ordered pair twos. Remember that these ones have to match up because this is the same point and these also have to match up because this is the same point. So now all I do is I use the numbers that I um, wrote for my x1, y1, x2, y2 and I just plug them straight into this formula. So y2 is 14 minus y1 is 6 over x2 is 3 minus x1 is 1. And remember I just have these subtraction signs because that is in my formula. But keep in mind, um, I think you might on this one, remember if we subtract a negative, if we do 1 minus, let's say, a negative 2, if that's our formula, we have a negative 2 here, then this is going to make a big plus sign because whenever we subtract a negative, we change them both to addition. Okay, keep that in mind. Um, back to number three, all we have to do is subtract straight across. Remember, you can always use your calculator on this. Um, I know what 14 minus 6 is. It's 8, and 3 minus 1 is 2. Always try to reduce your slope to the most simplified fraction or whole number. So I also know what 8 divided by 2 is. It's 4. So my answer here would be 4. That's it. Again, you're going to do the same thing on number four. Just be very careful um, if you're subtracting a negative to add. Okay, let's look at number five. Numbers, um, yeah, number five says what are the slope and y-intercept of the graph? We just have to look at this equation and determine what's my slope and what's my y-intercept. 
So whenever I have just one X, remember it's that n number right in front of the X. Well, I don't see a number, but that should represent the slope, the number right in front of the X. Since there's no number, but I still have an X, I can assume that this is one. That means one X. So my slope is one, and my Y intercept is always this plus or minus that's attached um, to the equation by itself. It's not being multiplied by anything. So my plus four is my Y intercept, so I can just write four. Okay, number six and seven are very, very similar, so I'm just gonna do number six. Remember, slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is my slope and b is my y intercept. So this one's pretty simple because they give us our slope and our y intercept. So I know I'm gonna have a y equals whatever my slope is here times x plus my b. Okay, so my slope is negative, so I'm going to have a negative one-fourth here. And my y-intercept is positive, so I can keep the plus sign, and I'm just going to add three. Remember, if your y-intercept is negative, you don't, you don't need this plus sign at all. You would just have a subtraction sign. So be careful on number seven because the y-intercept is negative, but you do it the exact same way. Okay, I'm going to move this paper up a little bit so you can see the next part. Okay. Number seven, number seven, we just went over. Okay, number eight, write an equation in slope intercept form for the graph of each line, y equals mx plus b. Same thing here, so um, whenever we're given a graph, remember to find the slope, we use rise over run. We could also find two points, but I would suggest rise over run. And the y-intercept is where the graph, this line, crosses the y-axis, which is this, the vertical one going up and down. Okay? And then we'll use those two numbers to write our equation. So our slope, if we pick two points here and here, that looks good. Remember, we have to pick points that um, the line goes through at an intersection on the grid. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, so my rise is 2, and I go over 1, 2, 3. Now I always like to check, I got a positive slope, let's make sure my line is positive. It is increasing from left to right, so I'm good. 2 over 3. So I'll write that in slope. And my y-intercept, again, just look where it crosses the y-axis, so that looks like 1, 2. So all I have to write is 2. If you wanted to write your ordered pair 0, comma 2, that's okay. But in your equation, this is all we'll need. Okay? So again, it's y equals mx plus b. And we're just replacing our m and our b. Our y and x will stay. So y equals, and we got 2 thirds x plus 2. And that's it on number 8. Again, number 9 is very similar. Um, find the rise over run, find your y-intercept, plug into the equation. Okay, we're moving right along on page two. Um, this is a word problem. It just says um, that we need to write and solve a direct variation equation to find out how many words he types so we can expect to complete um, in 12 minutes. So John can type 36 words per minute. We need to write an equation for that. So whenever I see a something per something that makes me think of slope so 36 words per minute is my slope so it's 36 words for every one minute so my slope is 36 because 36 over 1 is just 36 so I know if it's a direct variation, there is no y-intercept. So my equation should just look like y equals mx. The only number that I have to replace m, the only number that I have to replace is with a number is n. So we have y equals 36x. That's it for my equation. And now they want to know um, how many words that we can expect him to complete in 12 minutes. So remember that y is my words and x is my minutes. OK, 
Because remember, this is y over x. So y is words and x is minutes. So I, what I like to do is I just plug straight into my equation. If I know that x is minutes and we want to know how many he can do in 12 minutes, I'm going to do y equals 36 times 12. And again, you can always, always, always use a calculator for this. I don't know this off the top of my head, so I'm going to do it on the side. Okay, so I got 432. So 36 times 12 is 432. Okay. Um, number 11, same sort of thing here, but we do have um, a setup fee of $25. So I am going to go through this one with you. Um, and it says what does the slope represent, so that's very important. A photographer charges $5 per photo purchased plus a one-time fee setup of $25. So again, I need to write my equation and I need a slope and a y-intercept for this one because it's not direct variation. So $5 per photo, again, whenever I see that per, it makes a little alarm go off in my head. It makes me think that must be my slope, okay? So $5 per every one photo. So my slope is just 5. So I can do y equals 5. Remember our model equation for this is y equals mx plus b. We're replacing the m. We're replacing the b with the numbers that we find. Okay. Whenever I see a one-time fee of some number, I know that's always going to be my y-intercept. So my y-intercept is 25. Right after our slope always comes the x plus 25. So this is my equation. Now all they're asking me to do here is to find, uh, to tell them what the slope represents. So good news is I already wrote it up here. It's given to us in the problem, $5 per photo. So I know that the slope represents that it costs $5 per photo. Interpreting or representing the slope is, um, very easy if we can just take out that per and keep the same units. Okay, I'm going to scoot the paper down so that we can see number 13, and I just ripped it, and that's okay. All right. Almost there. Okay, there we are. So number 13 is about um, Tyler. It says Tyler buys the same number of DVDs every month to add to his collection. The table shows the number of DVDs that Tyler will have at the end of X months. So we have a lovely table. Let's look at the question. How many DVDs did Tyler start with and how many DVDs will he buy every month? Okay, so the start with um, is pretty simple. So let's eliminate some answers. Um, it says that at zero months, he had zero CDs. So that means that he started wherever X is zero, we want to know what Y is. Well, Y is zero, so that means that he started with zero CDs. And it looks like there's a mistake on, um, on this problem. All of these answer choices should say DVDs, not CDs. So started with zero DVDs. Okay, so we know that we can cross out A because that says three CDs and we can cross out C because that also says three. Now it says how many DVDs will he buy every month? That, again, if we want to know how many he will buy for one month, that is the slope. So they want us to find the slope or the constant rate of change. So since the y-intercept is 0, it's direct variation, we could just put y over x to get the slope. We could also do the change in y over the change in x. We'll get the same thing. So the change from 0 to 15, we add 15 
from 0 to 3 we added 3 this is we add 5 to get from 15 to 20 and we add 1 to get from 3 to 4 now these are two different numbers but that's okay let's see if our um, we can do one more so from 20 to 45 we add 25 and from 4 to 9 we added 5 so let's put these as the change in y over the change in x so our fractions are 15 over 3 5 over 1 and 25 over 5 15 divided by 3 is 5 5 divided by 1 is 5 25 divided by 5 is 5 so that means that he buys 5 DVDs every month so the answer is D find the slope of the line that passes through um, these two points this is a lot like 3 and 4 um, so I'm not going to work this one completely but I am going to set it up just so you see what to do with these negative numbers so again this is x1 y1 x2 y2 plugging into my formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 y2 is 7 and y1 is negative 3 so I always had to have my subtraction because that's in the formula and then a negative 3 divided by 0 is my x2 minus oh I have another negative 2 so whenever I had two subtraction signs next to each other remember they just make a gigantic plus sign that's what I always say so now we're just adding straight across so if you add 7 plus 3 and 0 plus 2 divide them by each other you'll get the answer okay number 15 is a lot like numbers 8 and 9 so you can reference those again make sure you're just finding the slope using rise over run and finding the y-intercept the line should pass the y-intercept at what point and then write your equation also make sure to check your slope it looks like it's decreasing so make sure that it's a negative slope and that is all good luck on your test